Okay, two different things we're going to look at. Uh, I just called this. Oops, I just called this limits involving infinity because there's two different things we're going to look at. One is if you have a finite limit as x approaches infinity, right? So this is where the infinity is. In other words, the infinity is what you're allowing x to approach. So that's that's part A here. Part B is the sort of the reverse of that. Where did I put part B? Way down here somewhere? Maybe I didn't put a part B. I did. Part B is the reverse. Infinite limits as you approach a finite number. I'm going to assume that you're okay with the word finite. If something is finite, I only have a finite amount of patience for certain things, or you might only have a finite amount of money you can spend on whatever, something, right? Finite is the opposite of infinite or infinity, right? Maybe you've never thought about that, infinity. It's not finite. So you have two things. You have infinite limits as you approach a finite number, as in this is a finite number here, but the limit is going to be positive or negative infinity. And the sort of the reverse of that, a finite limit as you approach an infinite number, as in this is going to be 3 or 6 or 20 or something like that, right? We're going to think about these in terms of the graphs first here, because this one, this function, you probably know what the graph looks like. What does the graph of that look like? Yeah, it just looks roughly drawn something like that, right? Oops, except it doesn't actually touch the axis. But it looks something like that. Um, you could uh, you could graph it on your calculator if you want to. Convince yourself of that. I'm going to pause it. Um, so that's one of our X. Put a point on here somewhere, and then you can move that around and see what what's happening. Um, if you were to move this, maybe we should make it so it actually shows the coordinates. Not the... Okay, so there's the coordinates. Can you even see that color? Uh, if you move this here, uh, we're going to look at two things here. We're going to look at the limit. What I, what I wrote there was, as you allow x to approach infinity, what's going to happen here? What happens as you go to the right here? What is what is the what is the function value approach? Zero, Zero right? It has a finite limit as x approaches infinity. A finite limit in in that it levels off at a certain value, not. It doesn't head up towards infinity. It doesn't uh, head down towards negative infinity. It has a finite limit there. It's going to get closer and closer. Any finite number you stop at, it's not going to be zero, but the limit is zero. That's the limiting value. And likewise, on the other side here, I guess I should take the point with me. Um, if, you, if you go on the other side, the limit, even though you're approaching negative infinity, the limit is still zero. Even though you're coming from the other side of it this time, the limit is still zero. All right, so you can say that the, the limit of both of these, the limit of that function as you approach infinity is zero. The limit as you approach negative infinity is zero. So again, just to make this clear, as you approach an infinite value here, right, this is finite. That's what we're looking at. Okay, this is a finite value. Finite just means you can put your finger on it. This is what it is, right? It isn't some unknown infinite thing. You've learned that that's what a that's what a horizontal asymptote is. We're going to expand your definition or understanding of what a horizontal asymptote is. Probably in the past you just learned, oh, it's a it's a it's a line that, uh, like if you had a, a horizontal line here that this thing gets closer and closer to without ever touching, that's probably what your definition of an asymptote is up to this point. It's going to be slightly more now. It's going to be basically if the limit as you approach infinity or negative infinity of a function is a finite number, that's a horizontal asymptote. If it levels off at something, that's a horizontal asymptote. So that probably you can see why that makes sense, except that even even a function like that sine 
sine x over x one we had that goes like this. We're going to still call this a horizontal asymptote, even though in grade 11 they would have problems with that. Why would they not like that being called a horizontal asymptote? Because it crosses it, right? Because it crosses it an infinite number of times. Our definition of horizontal asymptote is if that's what the function is tending to as you go one way or the other. So that's still a horizontal asymptote even though it touches it. All right? So we're, we're using limits to define what an asymptote is. If it has a finite limit, okay? So in other words here, horizontal asymptote if it has a finite limit. Okay, finite limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity. And this is b here, right? If this level was b, that's, it's a, that's where its horizontal asymptote is. And it's called, you know, the line y equals b. Now, I'm gonna, I am going to skip ahead here to... Uh, I'm going to skip ahead to the, the converse of this, the vertical asymptote thing, right? And then we can we can uh, give you some time to look through some of the questions here, okay? Um, there are there are these same things that we had before, and actually I got to cross out it again. I'm really having copy and paste problems, but all the properties of limits apply even if this is infinity. That's the only difference here from we what we had before. All these same properties apply, right? If you had if you had one function that was this and it was called f of x, and actually I guess we should make it so it has a horizontal asymptote here. Say it levels off there, and you have another function that uh, levels off there, right? If this was g of x and this was f of x, if I talk about the sum of those two functions, so if if this function here was the sum of those two functions, f of x plus g of x, if the first one has a limit of, of L, that's its, where it levels off, and the second one has a limit of M, then this has to be, without even you know checking it on, on a graph, that has to be M plus L. It's going to level off at whatever the sum of those two is. And again, it seems kind of obvious, right? If, if this is becoming... What you know, six, and this is becoming ten. This is going to be sixteen. That's all that this is saying here. And the same goes for a product, or a difference, or any of these things, a quotient. You can determine the limit of a more complicated function by looking at the limits of the individual pieces that make it up. All right, same as before, and even even if the limits are as you approach infinity. So again, I I want to leave this for now for you to work on afterwards, but I want to look at the, the opposite or the, the other piece of this, the other half of this. So this is this is the the other half where we're talking about if we approach a finite number, okay, this is a finite number if the limit is infinite. So this is the same function here, y equals one over x. And without, maybe even without even looking back at this graph here, but we will. If you are now not talking about as x approaches infinity, because it's, it's hard to do on this thing approach infinity, because I have to keep scrolling out to the right, but it's easier to approach zero here. Um, if you, uh, if you look at one side or the other here, if you look at the right hand limit as you approach zero, if you if you approach zero from the right, what happens to this function? What's its limit going to be? It's off the screen now, but it's going to be positive infinity. If you look at the left hand limit as you approach zero, what's its limit going to be? Negative infinity. The fact that they're different, can you say what the limit as you approach zero is without the plus or the minus there? You can't, right? There's no two sided limit. The limit as x approaches zero without the plus or minus doesn't exist, right? Does not exist. If you wanted to draw your little graph there, you can. That's pretty terribly drawn, but they wouldn't like that in Math 12 where you make a curve back on itself. Why am I even bothering? That looks terrible. 
We said as you approach from the right, it's plus infinity. As you approach from the left, it's minus infinity. This is going to be our definition of a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote is going to be if you have the limit as you approach a finite number, some value, from the right or the left, and notice there's an or, only one of them has to be true. If as you approach a finite number from the right or the left, if the limit is plus or minus infinity, that's going to be our definition of a vertical asymptote. If you understand what limits are, then maybe that is somewhat obvious, but all this is saying is as you approach a, a certain number, it goes up or it goes down. Question? I guess I guess this is that what we should put there is the long way plus or minus infinity like plus infinity or minus it's not plus and minus infinity when you write this so it's one or the other but I mean you could you could write it like that right but that's a good question good point because a lot of times we forget right because when you use this plus or minus you say you know if x squared is nine what's x you say x is plus or minus three so you think of it as plus and minus three two of them right. Um, think of those two together, right? It, it's limit as x approaches something here. Something is the worst arrow I've ever drawn in my life. Limit of, you know, if you have some function where you have the limit as x approaches something is something else here. If this one is infinity and this one's a finite number, b, that is which kind of asymptote? Horizontal or vertical? That's horizontal, right? Horizontal asymptotes you didn't look at too much in grade 11 because they're difficult to think about because really you have to understand something about limits. You have to say to someone, well, if you go out forever to the right or left, what's happening? This is a, this is a horizontal asymptote, right? At that value. If you switch this around now and you say, um, if, if this is where the infinity is and this is where the, the finite number is, then it's a vertical asymptote, right? Because it's as you get close to some some value here, as you get closer from the right or the left there, if you know that this goes up like this and it has to be plus, well, it it could be, I guess, this is always the big question is, what if they both go the same direction here? Does that mean the limit actually exists since they're both infinity? That's a very good question for discussion, I would say if they both go the same way, because you can come up with functions like that. Actually, if you say 1 over x squared, not 1 over x, 1 over x squared, 1 over x squared doesn't look like that and that. It actually looks like this. There is there is a missing value in the middle there, but it both goes the same way like that. It's actually infinity from both sides, but it's not connected up there, so it's a very good question. In my books, I would say, well, yeah, it actually exists because it's the same on both sides. Somebody else might argue differently. Anyways, do we think we're okay with this? I haven't um, done any of the questions with you here, either for vertical or horizontal. I want you to think about, because this is going to be tied to stuff you learned in grade 10 about how do you find vertical asymptotes, how do you find horizontal asymptotes. <laughs> think about what kind of algebra you can do on functions to find where the vertical ones are going to occur and where the horizontal ones are going to occur. And we're going to come back to it after. Some of them you aren't going to be able to work with algebraically like this, right? You, you can't, again, start canceling those and say it's sin, okay? But you can work with a lot of these things algebraically. Some of them I just want you to, you know, make up crazy functions so you have to look at them graphically and see. I wasn't necessarily thinking you were working algebraically with this one. It's tougher to see where horizontal asymptotes occur algebraically, but we can look at that after. Okay, so can you fill in some of the blanks here and like look at that function, draw a nice graph of it. Graphically means obviously make a graph. Numerically means make a little table that shows shows what happens. It's I'm not expecting you if you sh if you're showing a horizontal a horizontal asymptote numerically, you don't want to make a table that goes up to infinity. I'm going to run out of time here, so can you uh, can you work on filling in those things?